So 2023 until now, about a year and seven months, they've accumulated 282,000 BTC. Mm. If we just went to the beginning of this year, then we're looking at 183,000 BTC accumulated. So they've actually really increased their pace just since the beginning of 2024, which I think is a really good sign uh, that the powers that be, those key stakeholders in Bitcoin, are confident in where Bitcoin will inevitably end up. Welcome into the Thinking Crypto Podcast. I'm your host, Tony Edward, and with me today is Brian from Santiment. And we're, of course, going to do a deep dive into metrics around Bitcoin, Ethereum, meme coins, and much more. Brian, good to see you. Good to see you as well, Tony. How's everything been? Uh, Great. Uh, It's a big day. The Ethereum spot ETFs are officially live. So I think we can start with ETH and what signals, what metrics you're seeing on your end. Absolutely. There's quite a bit going on. So if we look at the past week of performance for some of the uh, utility indicators for Ethereum, we can see a few things. For one, trading volume has really picked up. Let me zoom out to the last month here. So trading volume, you can see it's sort of starting to climb. Today's actually the highest day so far since July 7th, which is a little over a two-week high. Um, I have a feeling by the end of the day, uh, we might be approaching that same 4th of July month high spike or potentially even surpass it. So um, I'll be revisiting this and put something up probably on our socials later today about it. But you can see the transaction volume here really took off. That's what these yellow and red bars mean. So clearly people are paying attention, right? They're definitely engaging with the Ethereum network. And of course, uh, part of this might be moving some of that Ethereum uh, out of their wallets, uh, just speculating so that they can convert them into some uh, ETF funds instead. Uh, some people are just more comfortable holding uh, an ETF of a coin rather than the coin itself. It's just personal preference for a lot of people. So that's kind of the explanation there. If we move on to circulation, you can really see how evident it is with the amount of unique tokens really taking off in terms of uh, daily movement. This is the highest level we've seen. I'd have to zoom back to about one and a half months ago, late May, last time we saw a circulation spike that high. Some of you might wonder, you know, how does all of this kind of weigh into price? I know that's why many of you are here. And the answer is these spikes in utility stuff generally... uh, increase the probability of a directional shift. So if mm-hmm. if Ethereum was like really surging right now, which it isn't, it's kind of just in the midst of most of crypto, uh, then a utility spike would mean that it would suddenly have a higher likelihood of dropping. If it was if Ethereum was dropping and you see a big spike, then that's a very good sign of a bounce. So it's not really doing either one at the moment. Uh, and Ethereum is really going to kind of depend on Bitcoin for the short term. But I think as it establishes itself as uh, more of a, as as being able to function on its own with its own ETF, it might be able to break out more in the coming months. It's going to be hard to predict when, but I'd keep an eye on the volume and how the initial inflows come in for Ethereum's ETF, similar to how it, happened for Bitcoin in mid-January. And yeah. if you look at the, yeah, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, I, I've been tracking the Bloomberg guys. They, they were talking about like uh, within the first five, 45 minutes, there was hundreds of millions in trading volume. Um, and they're hoping to hit, by the end of the day, maybe as far as inflows, a billion. But, you know, we'll see. Crazy. Yeah, I, I would really wouldn't be surprised. This has been a highly anticipated day for what seems like just about as long as uh, the Bitcoin ETF has existed itself. So uh, six months later, we're finally here. Mm -hmm. So MVRV wise, it's kind of a mildly concerning time for Ethereum. I wouldn't be surprised if we see a little bit more of a downturn until you see this orange line here, which shows that average traders are up about 2.8% in the past 30 days. If that gets into the negative range, 
Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean we have to drop 2.8% uh, for Ethereum's price, but the average trading returns would then drop 2.8%, get us into the negative range. And these negative ranges are generally when bottoms form and are historically the best times to buy because there's very little risk buying into an asset when there's already blood in the streets from all of those other traders' results. Um, one of the things we're seeing right now is that the stock market is pulling back a bit. The DXY is pumping a bit. So crypto seems to be a bit stagnant or like you're saying, there's a hints of a pull, another pullback coming, maybe not as significant as we saw recently, but uh, a bit of volatility before maybe things start to move uh, upward again. Yeah, the last time I saw the dollar kind of make this kind of move, albeit this is a really short move, was kind of mid-2022 when those interest rate uh, hikes were kind of peaking and we kept kind of waiting for that to end and the U.S. said, nope, hiking it more. And that uh, in turn really wrecked crypto along with, of course, some of the nefarious stuff going on with SBF and the FTX team around that time. Um, admitted to be suppressing prices. But yeah, the, the dollar's rise has kind of historically been crypto's enemy a little bit. When we, we look at the price of Bitcoin at 67, 68K or the price of Ethereum at 3,400 or so, what we're really doing is looking at the ratio of how much the coin's value is divided by USD or sometimes whatever currency you might be looking at. I know USD is kind of widely regarded, even if you're in a country that doesn't use USD. But um, a lot depends on the dollar. I mean, whether we like it or not, the, the US is still kind of this central uh, location that allows markets to be dictated around its politics and what's going on in, the, in its ecosphere on any given day. So uh, we, we would like to see the dollar kind of chill out and not uh, surge the way it's been, but uh, I would be shocked if we saw a repeat of 2022 or anything like it, because that was such an anomaly with uh, kind of the mainstream world getting back to normal and interest rates being hiked in order to allow COVID's, you know, previous two years to uh, dissipate on its impact of the world. So I, I think it's different circumstances and, and you should be aware, as you, as you said, Tony, that the dollar is going to impact crypto and equities uh, pretty much forever. Uh, so we should always be rooting for it to either stay flat or potentially even go down a little bit if you're investing in crypto. Yeah, absolutely. Now let's talk about Bitcoin. Um, obviously, Bitcoin found some sort of bottom, has been moving upwards. But as we just discussed, the DXY and the correlation to the stock market and so forth, uh, it's kind of putting some pressure on it right now. Um, what are you seeing as far as I think what people want to know is whales? What are the whales doing? Because that's a big indication of what they may be anticipating is coming months from now. Yeah, one of my top two favorite charts here. I always like to check in on what the 10 plus BTC wallets are doing, just the total mm -hmm. amount of Bitcoin that are held in shark and whale wallets. This is basically $670,000 or more wallets. Uh, and right now, it's been a good run going back to the very beginning of the year. If we just go since the first of the month up until now, uh, we've seen these 10 plus wallets accumulate a total of I'm sorry, this is the end of 20, 2022. So 2023 until now, about a year and seven months, they've accumulated 282,000 BTC. Mm. If we just went to the beginning of this year, then we're looking at 183,000 BTC accumulated. So they've actually really increased their pace just since the beginning of 2024, which I think is a really good sign uh, that the powers that be, those key stakeholders in Bitcoin, are confident in where Bitcoin will inevitably end up. Uh, so when you're in doubt and you see the, the multi, multi millionaires accumulating more and more, that should give you a feeling of confidence and, uh, you know, dissipate those worries of uh, that, that often equate to FUD 
and make you second guess whether you should be investing in crypto at all. Mm. And the other data point you had shared last time was the Bitcoin supply and exchanges. That's another great indicator as to what we can anticipate in the coming months. Um, that you know, if there's more Bitcoin going on those exchanges, that's a bit worrisome. But is, if there's less supply, um, it means there's possibly less sell pressure. 100%. Yeah, looking at the supply and exchanges, which I just overlaid on the same chart, obviously on different axes, but you can see the direction since the beginning of June in particular, this is about seven weeks ago, mm -hmm. uh, we've really seen it drop down, which should be a very promising sign if you're bullish on crypto. It, it's uh, It looks like almost a third of the supply that was on exchanges four has dropped off to uh, cold wallets. And that's a, a very promising sign in such a short amount of time. So I, I like the way that looks. Um, and especially this drop off here, uh, right before the all time high, that was a good sign as well. Uh, as you can see, when the, the, price, the supply and exchange was rising back here in 21 and 22, that's when we saw a lot of volatility. Obviously, we did still see that all-time high in late 2021, but the supply and exchanges just continued to move up and up and up all the way until that FTX collapse, like the week of. And uh, once that, once the dust started to settle from that, we quickly started to normalize. Yeah, supply and exchanges had one more leg up, but by this time, it was pretty clear that we were on our way back up. So. Uh, as long as we're moving down, it implies that there's less sell-off risk, uh, especially from those big wallets who can single-handedly, you know, drop the hammer and push prices down. Yeah, and I know some people have been uh, watching, you know, the whole Germany selling, Mt. Gox and all that. Now, Germany's finished selling, and um, I think there's a little bit of Mt. Gox selling that's probably going to take place, but overall to your point the supply going down uh really reduces the sell pressure and that's a good sign it's a sign i've seen in past bull market cycles it's indicative of uh the price may see a rally and and so forth it's it's good to go long at that point <laughs> exactly yeah I, I think uh it's funny how when prices are moving down everyone's kind of looking for things to blame germany was the the culprit for about a week. There were other things that people were pointing to. And then for some reason, uh, the Trump assassination attempt really ignited the rally. And we ended up seeing 60K for the first time in a month and then just kept the momentum going all the way until we got above 68. Yeah. And so speaking of Trump and politics, uh, we got to talk about the meme coins around Trump as well as Biden, which is known as Bowden. And then there's, of course, the MAGA coin, because we're seeing this, and this is even outside of crypto, just fascinating as civilization, human behavior, psychology, and markets, and how these meme coins are moving with what's taking place. Yeah, you don't get more speculative in crypto than meme coins. And crypto in general is already considered to be a very speculative sector, which I think is correct for people to believe that. Um, and meme coins, especially ones that are kind of uh, reflections of US political candidates, uh, let alone Trump, maybe the most famous person in the world right now. Uh, th these almost function as uh, kind of perception stock indicators of how much people believe in Donald Trump and his future as the uh, potential president in uh, four months from now when the elections happen. So obviously when the uh, attempted assassination happened right back here, we see this big jump up in Trump and then eventually it drops off. Everyone's talking about the coin. Uh, FOMO kicks in. And of course, when FOMO kicks in, we see prices go down. Markets move the opposite direction of the crowd's expectation, almost always. So when people get super uh, euphoric about Trump coin or MAGA, that, that kind of essentially is what marks the top. Similar to what we're probably going to see with Kamala and the new Kama coin, which 
I just learned about today, actually. I'm sure many of you might have known about it before then, but uh, it's up huge today. And eventually there's going to be a little bit of a FOMO round and prices are going to go down. Uh, we can't predict when that will happen, but we can look at like social volume, which we can see on this page. So here we can look at the comparative social volume on different platforms. We're tracking Telegram, Reddit, Twitter slash X, 4chan, and Bitcoin Talk. And then we can basically see all of them on the same page. We could even do shared access like this. So they're all basically using the same Y axis and you can directly compare which one's getting the most talk. You can see Tremp was getting a lot more attention a couple months ago in early to mid May. Bowdoin kind of got a little bit of extra attention uh, in just the past few days, of course, with Biden's uh, resignation as the Democratic candidate. And of course, Kama today is now getting the most attention that it's ever gotten because it's uh, barely been a thing until all of a sudden she's the likely, um, in fact, I think confirmed Democratic candidate and just had a record breaking amount of donations and things like that. So another thing we can look at is just the overall amount of mentions between Trump versus Kamala. Uh, this button here actually looks at the Trump token so I can disable it and then it'll switch to just the overall amount of Trump. And you can see a big difference there. So Trump is still being talked about way more than Kamala, but of course Kamala only became relevant a couple of days ago when uh, Biden resigned and suddenly she was really tossed into the limelight as the likely candidate for the Democratic side. So we can see that uh, there's still going to be kind of a crypto favorable bias toward Trump mm. uh, unless, you know, Kamala comes out with some established uh, comments about her take on crypto. Mm. Uh, but right now, I mean, looking at the different socials, Telegram kind of picked up on it. Reddit, not as much comparatively to Trump. Twitter and X, very, very close together, actually. Mm. Uh, and 4chan and Bitcoin talk, still very Trump biased at the moment. But I, I would expect there's going to be some changes to this over time as we get closer and closer to the election. And uh, whether you follow politics or not, I, I do believe this this kind of stuff is going to be very relevant to crypto's price, as we even saw here with the Trump talk that suddenly picked up and how it surged crypto and then it started to decline. Uh, these things are are making a major impact. Yeah, it's fascinating. People have been calling it the Trump pump, right? The impact on the markets and uh, they're anticipated. The markets are anticipating that Trump may be more lenient um, you know, to crypto, obviously, because he's been campaigning on it but also rate cuts, tax cuts, yada, yada. Um, so it's fascinating, man. I, I I think a book needs to be written about this <laughs> human behavior, meme coins and all these things. <laughs> I know it's, it really, it's a good lesson if you're getting into crypto right now, or even if you've been experiencing crypto for a while, it, it teaches you that it's not about your own opinions of who you like, uh, or don't like in the U.S. presidential election, or if you're from a country where the presidential collection, uh, election is irrelevant to you. But it's a study on how if you understand the crowd's perception and what they think, you can make a lot of money by being ahead of, ahead of them in understanding how they're going to react to any good or bad news for either candidate. Uh, and it was... Uh, we saw it a mile away. As soon as that assassination news happened, you know, the, the initial reaction was actually a quick drop in Bitcoin because the, the crowd is pro crypto and anything that happens to Trump, uh, especially his health, would be would likely cause crypto to go down. But then they hear he's OK and he's walking off stage and gives his, you know, fist up in the air. And uh, there's this big positive reaction to crypto. So it really, really can uh, be a good, good like study in terms of how people, how people react to any political news and how you can really profit from people's overreactions to every little bit of 
political uh, news that pops out on, on any given day. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, you know, well, we'll see what happens as things progress. Uh, Trump is supposed to speak at the Bitcoin conference this week in Nashville. Supposedly, he will be making some big announcement that Bitcoin could be used as a U.S. Treasury Reserve asset. So we'll see what that does to the mentions, the price and all these things. Um, so I think some bullish times are ahead, but we got to go through the volatility. Exactly. And we have to make sure that uh, people believe it too, right? He might be planning to say good things, but it's ultimately about how uh, the crowd reacts to them and whether he's saying something that is new rather than something that's already known. Because if it's something people know already about Trump and his crypto stance, then Theoretically, that should move anything because it's kind of baked in to what people know about Trump's stance on crypto. Yeah, uh, exciting times. And, you know, you brought up a great point of um, it doesn't matter who you're voting for necessarily and all that, but it, you can use this data that Santamon provides to get ahead of the crowd to see what they may be doing and place your bets accordingly, whether that's going long or short, and you can make money. But you're making an informed decision using data and metrics. Hundred, yeah, hundred percent. Sentiment doesn't have a political stance at all. We never will. Um, whoever you vote for is your business. But at least according to data, we know that crypto, the crypto community reacts positively to anything that's pro-Trump right now. So if you're a a Democrat or you are apolitical, you can still benefit from knowing. Uh, that, that there's that bias as of right now. And it could change at any time. You never know. Yeah, for, uh, for sure. Brian, great stuff, man. I appreciate the insights and the information here. And um, well, we're going to meet another two weeks. So we'll see you know, how things look with the Ethereum inflows, as well as what Trump has proposed and what impact that has had on the market. Yeah, hopefully we're above 70K Bitcoin and maybe even 4K Ethereum at that time. Who knows? We're crossing our fingers, but overall more bullish signs than bearish right now. So happy to report that at least. Awesome. Thanks, Brian. Thanks, Tony. Good catching up.